Service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. This is one of Muhammad Ali's quotes. So we're continuing, well, uh, some of the lessons I learned from one of the all-time, one of the all-time sporting legends. Well, he's right on that. You would rather serve other people first than receive payment later. Well, asking for payment head-on is well, basically a, short, a short-term solution for either your brand or your business. So, <clears throat> if you serve others for free first, you're building up value. This is what this is what probably well this is probably what Muhammad Ali uh, meant when he said that. So again, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. You know what? That's one of the um, that's one of my all-time favorite quotes because it has stuck accord in me. I used to ask. How will I be paid? How am I going to earn? How am I going to earn mula on that? In the long run, I didn't earn anything. But when I started, well, giving my advice, serving others without asking anything in return, that's when I got well. That's when I got headway for well for my life or for my brand so either way this is one of the um, one of the biggest lessons I learned from the great Muhammad Ali I just couldn't uh, get the uh, get the pride rally that happened last week that uh, really ended uh, that, uh, that was dispersed Pretty badly by uh, by cops in Manila, but I did look at that from both sides of the coin. All right, it's Pride Month. Okay, uh, the LGBTQ community has the right to express their uh, grievances, their uh, their frustrations. Okay. The frustrations, especially in this, uh, in these, in these crazy times. But um, the way they, the way they, um, the way they, the way they did the rally, and the timing of that rally, okay. That's what made me think. Right? That's what really made me think. Now. Don't get me wrong, okay? I have I have gay friends, okay? I have no problem mingling with uh with with LGBTQs, okay? I got I got a friend who's also a um also who might consider also a Yu-Gi-Oh buddy because um she she plays Yu-Gi-Oh, all right? She plays Yu-Gi-Oh too. Hey, she's, she's she's better than me. She's actually better than me. She um. She ranked higher in me when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the rank up league points, right? She has more. She had more rank up league points than me. All right. She's be, she's a way better player, and I consider I consider her a Yu-Gi-Oh buddy. Say, well, I we did face we did face in a, we did face in a match only once, but most of the time we we face each other in practice matches. Okay. We face each other in practice matches. <laughs> uh, she's a good friend of mine. Okay? She's a good friend of mine. And he's gay. Okay? And, and he, he's not just, uh, he's not just uh, gay in a sense, but gay in everything. Uh, he dressed like a girl. So uh, I, address, I address him as she. Well, because that's, because that's, yeah, that's his sexual preference. So you got to respect that. You have to respect that. Well, again, now going back, going. Don't get me, don't get me wrong about this. Okay, I am an ally of the LGBTQ community because I have, 
I've had uh, I've had gay and lesbian friends uh, all throughout the course of my life, and I had no pro and up to now I ha I have no problem mingling with them and becoming good friends with them. Well, I am an ally, but if you but if you disrespect the law, you know you guys know very well the guys that are the guys that rallied and got this got dispersed pretty uh, pretty badly to those to those uh, to those people that rallied that day okay you know very well that we are in a community quarantine mass gatherings are strictly prohibited I am very sure you did not uh, you did not push through with this rally without a permit because when they say when they say mass gatherings are prohibited in a community quarantine i am very sure no permits to rally will be approved they won't be approved <clears throat> that um uh, that instance alone okay that instance alone that but still you push through with the rally so Naturally, the cops will arrest you. Who cares if you who cares if you um, if you practice social distancing? Mass gatherings are prohibited. Okay, we're still uh, nearly the entire nearly the entire country is still under GCQ, and yet you yet you you went out on the street. You took it out on the. You took it. Yeah, you took it to the streets. I don't know if uh, if that rally alone will spike the cases, but you shouldn't have done that. You guys shouldn't have done that. Okay, and now, uh, and now you're complaining that your rights were violated. <sighs> All our rights are being violated in this GCQ. Essentially, but there is a medical crisis. Okay. Essentially, all our rights are being violated. But in the eyes of the law, it's just being suspended because there is a pandemic, and you should have just followed that. You guys should have just followed that. Your voices will be heard. Your voices will be heard louder and clearer online. Haven't you heard? All right. You could have done that online. You could have um, organized a virtual conference, a um, a virtual meeting, wherein you you broadcasted your grievances to well, not just to not just to our country, but to the entire world. So. Here's what I'm going. Here's what I'm ultimately going to say to you. I am an ally of the LGBTQ community, but if you disregard the rule of law, if you do not obey the law, I'm very sorry. No one is around. I have no allies in you. Let me repeat that. I am an ally of the LGBTQIA plus community, but if you disregard the law, I have no friends. This guy named uh, Gary Travis over at LinkedIn had um, an article there that concludes that when you're going for a career, you should go for a you should not go for a salary but rather go for your passion well he's right on that okay, he's, he's very right on that I've been <coughs> excuse me I've been on both sides of the coin already I've uh, worked for some years during the 90s and the early 2000s I always went after the money it's a high paying job and if I can do it, if I got the skills for it, I'll apply for it. 
<clears throat> and I will get hired for it. <clears throat> but sadly, I was never happy in the end. I was never happy. But when I get into network marketing, or right now, content creation, well, the um, the pay, well, or um, the income may not be as may not be as big, but hey, I am I am liberated. I am I'm happy, and. Ay nako si na. Ay nako si Erma talaga. As I was saying, the pay, the uh, the pay plans may not be that, not be, not be that good. I always end up happy. Okay. My mentor Pedro Aguilar always, uh, always tells me, always tells me through well, through through his books. And through personal interact, through personal interaction, that um, it's not the financial income that's always, that's always good. It's the psychic, but the psychic income is always better. He's right on that again. So, if you're um, if you're somewhat not happy with the job you have, you might as well you might as well follow your passion. All right. If you're happy with following your passion, the money's easy. Take that from me, All right? Take that from me. It may not be, um, it may not be as high paying, but at the job, if you're if you're set, if you don't like a, uh, if you don't like a business or a brand, you still want a career. Always go for your passion, not for the salary. I just noticed these past few uh, these past few days that TikTok is already um, getting into another trend, and it's um, it's not the dance videos, it's not even the pet videos. It's more on the creepy side. No, just joking. But they are they are actually educational to watch. All right. Although there are on there are other videos. On TikTok, that are that real, that have real educational value, right? There are doctors um, describing what kind of how this, how a certain disease starts, how are even even pieces of history in in TikTok video. But the trend right now is creepy stuff, all right? This is the last time I saw this kind of trend was on Reddit. But but up to now, Reddit is uh, Reddit is still being flooded with these creepy stories. Some are urban legends, and some are fucking true. They are fucking true. So the way I see it, TikTok is the new Reddit. But don't get me wrong, right? TikTok still has dance videos, has still has pet videos, and even social justice videos. Okay. But the trend right now, well, let me put it in the top three. Number three would be um, pet videos. Number two would be, um, it's, it's a rising trend actually, the um, educational ones. And number one, the creepy stuff, right? Not exactly the, um, not exactly the, uh, the gory type, all right? Or TikTok would be, or TikTok would shadow, would, would, would ban their accounts, all right? That's not a lot on TikTok. They would tell stories about these these uh, these creepy hauntings or these urban legends or even uh, how missing persons got missing. So that's the number that's the number one trend I am seeing right now. Because of that, I repeat, TikTok is the new Reddit. I'm currently here right now in, uh, in front of my house. There's a <laughs> there's a road repair thing going on outside, so that's why I got the face mask. Okay, this is not for this is not for uh, the pandemic, but for the pollution that's coming in outside. But I really need a good atmosphere for this entry. Now, when I got uh, when I first got into 
network marketing. Of course, my focus then was to sell the product. As I was saying, my main focus then was to sell the product. I got my first sale. Right? I got my first sale. It was, uh, I was still with uh, High Desert at the time. So my, my first sale was a, was that small a bottle of bee pollen. Okay, I was able to sell one bottle. And my, um, I remember my dad told me that in, uh, in English, of course. <clears throat> he was already undermining me. It was, it was my first sale. It was my icebreaker into the, into the profession of network marketing. So, I thought, oh, no. yeah, it's just my first sale. And as they say, you're only as good as your last sale. So, that's just that, that, that's a, um, that's that's partly true. After that, I never, I never got to I never got to I never got to sell anything, right? Never got to sell anything until uh, later later the following year, all right. But oh, I think I did something right back then. I celebrated that victory because well, fast forward to 2020 now. You gotta celebrate. I, I gotta celebrate every uh, every victory that I get, and so should you. So should you. No matter how, no matter how small, no matter how big, no matter how mediocre it is. As they say in sports, a win is a win. You gotta celebrate that. Okay. Of course, after celebrating, you gotta get back to work, and probably. Look at the flip side of it. What would have happened if you did not, uh, if you did not follow the process that led you to that victory? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that over. Okay. What would have happened? What, um, what would you have done wrong? What would you, what would you prevent? from happening in order to get another victory like that. You know what? I don't know why um, why, why some people would discount, uh, would discount wins as a learning experience. Okay, I'm done with the fact that you learn more lessons when you lose, but when you win, you just got to learn. You have to learn your lessons too from winning. Okay. Of course, losing, losing, make, losing, uh, losing is uh, losing makes you learn. But it takes it takes a real person. It takes, it takes a real human being to learn also from his wins. So celebrate every victory that you get. Okay. Don't give a shit if, uh, if it's big or small, uh, magnificent or mediocre. A win is a win. So celebrate it. Okay? Feel good about that victory. Feel good about every victory that you get. I almost forgot. Celebrating every win that you get boosts your confidence. Right? The more confident you are, the more focused you can become. Remember that. I'm gonna run some errands right now. So while he, while I'm doing that, let's let's chop up this entry. Now, in my previous entry, I talked about celebrating every victory you get. Well, in order for you to do that, you have to well, passing vehicle. So I was saying. In order for to in order for you to do that, you have to look for a way to win. Right? You got to look for the win always. Now, how do you do that? Well, I go back to that uh, to that guy. My uh, my entire family sued for 
let's call this for libel oh here i am and i'm back so they downgraded the case to oral defamation which my father wholeheartedly disagreed but he had no choice he had to go through he had to go he had to go with that he had to pull up with that and well the court found my dad uh, uh, what you call this questionable because he was blind he was already blind at the time and he was only basing it on what on what he heard on how the incident occurred all right I was actually part of that incident all right I all I almost punched the guy's lights out okay? I almost punched the guy's lights out uh, because he was because he was totally uh, he was totally dissing both my parents all right he was totally dissing both of them on uh, on the street all right if it weren't for if it weren't for Balagay officials I might have punched his light I might have sent him to the hospital to tell you the truth I might have sent the guy to the hospital and well uh, the court ruled uh, well actually the court dropped the case because uh, when, like I said a while ago, when my dad took the stand, he couldn't uh, he couldn't recognize the voice anymore. And uh, well, well, I was well, I was also I was also in that courtroom. Okay, I was also in that courtroom because I was his uh, uh, I was his uh, what you call this? I was his companion. I was his constant companion. And well, I thought. Why didn't my dad get me as a witness? <laughs> why didn't my dad why didn't my dad get me as a witness? Uh, I don't know why. Or we would have or we would have sent him to jail. Because I was I was the one who actually figured in that altercation. Okay. But um, here was the lesson I learned from from that case. Imagine if you would uh, imagine yourself in that uh, in that suspect's shoes okay you got sued you got sued basically you got sued so if you want if you want legal assist you want free legal assistance you have to go to the public attorney's office but i'm i was very sure they turned him down because of his financial standing at the time he can afford an attorney he can afford a private lawyer so he was forced to get a private lawyer that in itself, that in itself is an expense. Okay? It's a huge expense. But worse, uh, whereas my dad, he did not spend a dime. He did not spend a single centavo. You, the only expense we got was the was to zero was the was to photocopy all the documents. That was it. But aside from that, we, uh, we did not get a private attorney. We just did it uh, through the fiscal's office. And yeah. For me, although my although my dad couldn't accept it, but for me, the real victory there was what he spent a lot of money. He spent a lot of money. That's how you find. That's how you find a win. Right. Look at it from different different person different people's point of view, and whichever whichever suits you, consider that a win. So that's how. Up to now. That's how I find my wins. Okay. I put myself into the other person's shoes and see if, hmm, see if there's a win for me.